Welcome, Dr. Biscamine. Many faculty in the School of Medicine are incorporating active learning methods, such as team-based learning, in their teaching to help engage students. Can you explain exactly what team-based learning is? Team-based learning is an active learning process that uh, involves um, a reading assignment ahead of time for the students to prepare, and then uh, a quiz individually which incentivizes the student to do the reading the night before. And then uh, teamwork to take a group quiz and solve problems using that material um, called the application. How does this interactive strategy impact student preparation, learning, and assessment? Well, it's, it's a more active learning process, so it gets the students more involved. Um, it also, um, because of the quiz, uh, in, you know, the students will prepare ahead of time because in the past we've always been a little disappointed when students come unprepared. It generally helps the students at the lower end of the class. Um, they tend to learn the material and do better overall. Medicine is a, a team process and so they need to learn how to work with each other, how to support each other, um, and it's a, it's a very important part of it. Um, as part of the TBL, there is a peer assessment, and with the peer assessment, they um, are assessing how well the student is participating, whether they're coming prepared. What are the first steps that faculty need to consider when they're planning a TBL activity? You have to um, identify either a reading they're going to uh, read ahead of time, um, often a chapter in a book or a review article, but I also sometimes just have them review material that's already been given in class. And that is what their quiz is going to be on. And they will take their quiz and then you take the cases, the clinical cases, and you uh, make that the application where they're going to solve problems using the material that they uh, read the night before. What challenges did you face when implementing team-based learning? Well, there are a lot of challenges. One is just to make sure you make the quiz straightforward, or that leads to a lot of controversy, and you want to get through the quiz quickly. You don't want to spend a lot of time on that, because that should just be a measure of uh, whether they have a basic understanding of the material. Um, then when you get to the uh, application, solving the problems, the case-based um, problems. Then the difficulty is the difference in the teams. There are some teams who will work very quickly and be done and then sit there with nothing to do. And then there are some teams who will take um, as much time as you give them and have difficulty making a decision. And trying to coordinate that and make sure things are flowing smoothly um, is difficult sometimes. And um, what you have to do is you have to give the group that will take as much time. You have to give them a defined time and tell them they have to come to a decision. How do you deal with students who ask questions that you don't have the answers to? Well, that happens and I'm always amazed and surprised when I get a question that nobody ever had thought of before. Um, you have to uh, acknowledge that. You have to admit if you don't know the answer that you don't know the answer and either say you'll look that up and come back with the information or ask them to look it up. And then you, you purposely want the application or the cases to be a little ambiguous or controversial. You want possibly more than one answer so that that generates discussion. You don't, but you have to let the students know that ahead of time. Uh, you don't want the quiz to be controversial or ambiguous. You want a one best answer there. What kind of feedback have you gotten from students about your team-based learning activities? Um, in general, they like it. They like uh, th using the material for case-based uh, problem solving. They like the interactive nature. When they're not happy, it's usually because the quiz was ambiguous and controversial or the material was above their level. You have to be careful that it's something that they can master and not something that is really at a resident or fellow level. How are you supported in your use of TBL in the School of Medicine? When I first started, I went to a workshop. The School of Medicine helped support that. And then since then, they helped support um, 
you know, preparing the material, making sure I have everything I need. Everything right now is on paper, but with the new e-curriculum, it will be very nice to use. Faculty development has always been helpful. They've held several workshops, usually like a half a day a workshop. They also help develop the cases, will um, point people in the right direction as far as help from faculty who are doing the TBL. And then uh, there are TBL cases on MedEd Portal. They'll help them find those as well. Okay.